Well, good morning. My name is Derek Wade, and I welcome you to our beach house garden here on Sullivan's Island. Today I want to tell you a little bit about our garden and some of the plant material that we've been enjoying over the last several years. But I want to begin by telling you a little bit about this house because the house is integral to the garden design. This is a 1910 circa house, um, summer cottage house here on Sullivan's Island and it came into our family in the early 60s. Back in those days, there was very little except an open lawn, no irrigation, lots of stickers. Some of you might remember what the Sullivan's Island was back in the 60s. And Daddy planted a number of pecan trees, he planted pear trees, he planted a few oaks in the back for parking. The garden has changed considerably since then. This garden is about seven years old, and it started when we raised the house about eight years ago. This house used to be about four to five feet lower than where it is today. And we were very concerned about the aesthetics of lifting a small cottage up out of the ground too high. So we figured that the best way we could resolve that proportional problem, if you will, is to raise the grade of the garden. So along the front foundation of this house, there's a knee wall, and there's up to 18 inches of, of uh, topsoil that allowed us to lift this grade so that we could install this garden. And that topsoil has allowed us to put in a number of wonderful plants in, in, this, uh, in this garden. Let me show you a few. This garden is primarily a summer garden and the color is really wonderful in the early summer, springtime, and in the fall. But you need to have evergreen in the garden for the winter months. So, this, in this garden we use some boxwoods. I love using this formal, rounded form in an informal garden. And we also use gardenia back here which smells just wonderful in the summertime. You can smell it all, all through the house. But we also use Ray Philipsis, which has gotten a bad rep over the years, but we found that if you put it in full sun and if it has really good drainage and you don't bother to feed it much, it can be a beautiful addition to the garden. I'd also like to show you a couple of whimsical plants that I have up on the, up on the porch here. This is a collection of yuccas and uh, agaves and so on that we got up at um, uh, but Plant Delights Nursery a couple of years ago, and they've been just wonderful fun up here on the, on the front, pa uh, front porch patio, if you will. Okay, I'd like to also show you um, the shade garden on this side and the sun garden on that side, so walk over here and we'll take a look. One of the challenges of this garden is that it has a very distinct shade uh, portion of the garden and a sunny portion of the garden. And so on this side over here, we don't get as much color as we get in the sunny part, but we do have an opportunity to have different textures in here. So we have elephant ear, we have cephalotaxis, we have the tractor seat plant, which is already starting to throw flower. We've got a little bit of variegated Dianella, another boxwood in the back, and it's just been a fun place to play around with different types of textures in the garden. A couple of years ago, we put in the southern wood fern underneath the bald cypress, and it has proven to be a, a lovely bumper that separates the shade garden from the front lawn. And uh, it, we cut it back every spring and it comes out beautifully and it holds its uh, foliage reasonably well throughout the whole summer. Let me take a minute to share with you what we do across the front of the garden itself. There are a number of perennials in here. You'll see there's gara. We've got some, well, they're pintas. That's an annual, certainly. Um, there's plumbago in there. We have a couple citrus. There are some uh, knockout roses, which are really strong in the spring and again in the, in the fall. And on the other side, we have the cassia, more plumbago. Uh, there's another raphiolepsis over there, etc. But what helps to tie all of this together is this border, this light colored border that you see. And right now it's Aztec grass. In the summer, that is pure white vinca. And in fact, we just pulled it a couple weeks ago. And, um, and it helps to tie the whole garden together. And the Aztec grass is meant to do that for us in the winter months. When we designed the garden, we recognized that the house is off center on the lot. 
So to define the front lawn, we put in this little white picket fence, which matches the one on the other side, framing the garden. But this white picket fence also acts to give us space for this uh, for the driveway here, and it provides a place to run vines up on here. You can see we have the coral, coral vine, which is a little past its prime for sure, but we'd let it run all over the fence and up over the, uh, the mallow over on this side. Underneath here, we have Baptisia for the springtime, the uh, agave with the blue days there going off. And this year I tried, um, this is a type of, of um, Saladago, Saladago stricta, and it's certainly past its prime right now but you get a sense that this thing was lovely. Another name for this plant, by the way, is uh, wand goldenrod. Over on this side, one of my favorite plants over the last several years has been this kufia. This is kufia vermilionaire, and the hummingbirds just love this plant, as do the little skippers, and we see one buzzing around right here right now. Match this up with the alternathera, I think I'm saying that right, and right below that is a type of coreopsis. It's just finishing its bloom and um, I'm sorry you weren't here about two weeks ago. Behind that, to give us a um, visual block down the driveway, this is plume grass, and it's an ornamental sugar cane. And you see it's just big and massive, and it gives us a nice blockage down this side of the, of the uh, driveway, and we back it up with a Chinese fan palm down the other side. But the real showstopper on this garden has been the Brugmansi over here. And I'm really sorry it's not in full bloom right now, but uh, we'll walk around and I'll show you a flower that is typical of what it does through the summer. So imagine this plant with hundreds of flowers, like this one right here. And when this plant is in its prime and it's going off, it's just magical. And people stop here in front of the house all the time and say, what is that thing? Brugmansia, Charles Grimaldi. We got it from Tony Avant's uh, uh, nursery, Plant Delights Nursery up in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's been a real showstopper. Here we are in the back side of the house. And I want to just point out to you that we have this patio made from old paver blocks that my father made years ago. These are all approximately 50 years old and they were configured around the back of the house in a different configuration before the renovation. But we used them together to honor my dad and we're just delighted to have them here. And they lead to a pathway going to the backyard of old curb stones that we found on a job site downtown and were able to salvage. And around this little patio area, we have a date palm here, which is about doubled in size in just the last couple of years. And it provides a ceiling for the space. It's really quite delightful. Um, the thing with these guys is you just got to prune them up so they stay nice and neat and tidy. And then this summer, this has been a special summer for us with this whole COVID thing. So to make sure that we were in good shape, we had a smell test every day. And this plumeria over here, which is a gift from another member of the Hort Society, it's not flowering right now, but when it is flowering, it's very fragrant. And I would come down every morning and take a sniff and make sure I was good to go and no COVID today, sniffing on the plumeria. We're gonna finish our garden tour by taking a quick glance at the backyard. The dominant tree in the backyard is this lovely live oak, which is planted right around Hugo time frame. So you see how quickly they'll, they'll grow in, the, in this part of the world. Underneath we put coleus that are nice and bright and airy. And in the back there's a large um, agave back there with a few totem poles, if you will, pieces of driftwood salvaged from the beach. We uh, recently worked on a drainage project back here, which needed to get done before I could finish up my garden. So this is a work in progress, and I invite you to come back and see our garden sometime in the future. In the next couple of years, it'll be different, and we welcome you coming to see us here at the Wade Beach House on Sullivan's Island. Thank you very much for joining us. Take care.